So, hey, Saints, it's Sister with the Testimony, and Hope and I are out here um, getting in shape so that um, we can do our ministry. And I'll tell you what, I'm uh, honestly <laughs> a whole lot happier on the pulpit than standing behind the pulpit. So, um, Hope is just as sweet as she can be. Hi, Hope. What you doing? Oh, Brown. She is such a good girl. Uh, she hasn't been ridden in about 16 months because, as you can see, my pen is really, it's got a lot of ruts and stuff in it. And uh, I don't want her to get hurt. And uh, she went through a period of time where she didn't have any shoes on. So I just said, I'm going to give her a year off and see what happens. And it was so awesome, Saints. Um, had a lady come by the uh, churchyard sale and... Her horse passed away a year or so ago, and I told her, you know, just come out and see Hope and meet her. And she did. She fell in love with her, and Hope really liked her. And it just motivated me to get on my horse and get going with her. Uh, the Lord said, Leslie, you know, you've been a little lazy here. I've given you this amazing tool, and uh, you're not to sell Hope. She is the ministry. Uh, go ahead and uh, use her for my glory it's not about your selfishness anymore. It's about using her to help other people. And uh, now that, you know, I've got a clear word from the Lord, it's it's just so much, it comes so much easier, saints. So I'm sitting here, i got my word with me, and uh, I have an amazing pulpit. And uh, she's just so gorgeous. And she's so sweet. Hasn't been ridden in 16 months. The lady got on her bareback the other day, and she was just as kind as she could be to that lady. So I know that Hope is a service animal. She's going to help a lot of folks that are depressed, that are down. Um, I had a judge's son in Commerce, Texas, when we lived there. Um, he was from Greenville, and he had a son that was autistic. And they came out, and um, he rode my horse a few times, and he spoke to his parents for the first time in his life. He was nine years old and they were thrilled. And I knew then that I needed to do something with horses. I just didn't know what because it was always about me and showing and winning and competition and stuff. And the Lord has taken me through a wilderness. And uh, I'll tell you what, guys, you should want to go to the wilderness like Jesus did. Uh, as soon as Jesus was baptized, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. And I'll tell you what, saints, it's a lonely place in the wilderness, but it is a wonderful place. It's a purging time. It's a, a time to find who you really are in Christ. You're just alone with him. Uh, I don't talk to anybody except my husband. Um, I don't have any contacts or anything that the Lord has allowed me to remain with. I've got one or two ladies that um, are kind of like I am. And uh, we stay in contact and pray for one another. But other than that, I've pretty much been alone for um, well, going on a year and a half. Just Jim and I and the horse and the dogs and the woods. And it is a beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, I can honestly tell you that I have enjoyed it, saints. Run to the wilderness. Let the Spirit of God take you to your wilderness place so that you can be purged and cleansed and find your purpose guys you don't have to die in the wilderness you can get through the wilderness just like jesus did after 40 days and 40 nights saints fasting in the wilderness you know that the enemy had to have come and had to have sent every force he could against jesus and uh, Jesus prevailed. He stayed in the Word because He was the Word. Flesh. So He stayed in Himself. I know that sounds weird, but if you think about it, saints, the Word of God lives in you. He is alive in you. He quickened your spirit. He brought you to life. So think about it, guys. If you really seriously will embrace your wilderness... Just like Jesus, at the end of that wilderness, the devil's going to come to you himself. He's going to tempt you. Just like he did Jesus. Three times he tempted him. Three times Jesus, the word, put the word back on him. The spoken word, just so you know, the sword of the spirit is the spoken word of God. It's spoken. 
Once it's spoken out of your mouth, it is life. It's just written words, logos on the page. But when it comes to life like Jesus did, it's spoken out of your mouth. So Jesus put that word back on him three times. He told him, it's the word. It's the word. It's the word. You know, when he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And when he put that word on Satan, Satan departed from him for a season, saints. Don't think that the devil's going to leave you alone never try to touch you or come back again. He couldn't touch Jesus. He was God in the flesh. But he sure did send all the forces of hell against him again in the Garden of Gethsemane. If you've never been in your wilderness, saints, if you've never defeated Satan in your wilderness time... How are you going to transition to the Garden of Gethsemane where all the sins of the world were upon the Lord? You're going to have your own suffering. The Lord said the trials and tribulations, the afflictions of the saints, they're going to be many. We're not to be afraid. He said, I've overcome the world. The saints, I just want to encourage you today that whatever your pulpit is, whether it's a horse or a, a worship minister, if you're a mother... Uh, raising small children uh, that is your pulpit if you're a father working to support your children you're a single father or a single mother trying to support your children that's your ministry support your children do what the Lord has called you to do bring them up in the way that they should go when they're old they will not depart from it speak the word of God in your wilderness place and learn and grow from that wilderness place don't allow the enemy to defeat you. You get to that 40th day and he comes to you. Don't think that he hadn't been plotting and planning and to find you at your weakest point. Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So seriously, saints, come on. After 40 days and 40 nights and you didn't eat or drink, you'd be a little bit weak in your flesh. But let me tell you what, your spirit man would be strong. And that's what you need to be focusing on is your spirit man being strong. So embrace your wilderness. Face Satan, put the word on him, put the word on him, put the word on him, and you too shall overcome. It's Sister with a Testimony on my pulpit, the Mount of Olives, and her screen name, of course, her fame name. And if she gets famous, that's okay. She's a horse. The Lord will do it. It's his tool, her fame name. Olivet. So from my Mount of Olives, haha, <laughs> my new pulpit, God bless you. I love you. I plead and apply the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach over you to hide, protect, and keep you in all your ways. Let's trot a minute. And I just speak that the Lord Himself will keep you and protect you in all your ways, that His face will shine upon you. And that you will richly allow the word of God to dwell in you. And when the enemy comes like a flood, you'll be able to lift up that standard against him. A sister with a testimony, God bless you, I love you, on the Mount of Olives. Later.